pretty common knowledge that the original QK65 was the catalyst that started the current budget keyboard trend that has engulfed the hobby these past few years. Since its initial release back in 2021, we've seen a number of high quality, great sounding keyboards at affordable prices. When the QK65 V2 was announced, many people weren't too pleased with the artistic direction of the board, including a protruding screen and LED bar across the top of the board. So the new classic version has kept a lot of the upgrades like the weight and badge module, along with the very needed easy assembly upgrades, but has ditched the gimmicky additions as deemed by some. Now this is all well and good, but the real reason this board piqued my interest was the implementation of a Hall Effects PCB to accommodate the new Hall Effects switches that QWERTYKeys are releasing in line with this keyboard. So in this video I want to look specifically of what Hall Effect switches are and the benefits of them, as well as how this works in this particular custom and how we can expect to see this become a little more common within the keyboard hobby. Now, although Hall Effect switches in today's keyboard look extremely similar to our standard MX switches, their functionality along with their internals differ in a number of ways. Mechanical switches function by the activation of a keystroke through the connection of metal contacts within each of the switches. As the switch is pressed, the contacts touch and the switch actuates. When the pressure is withdrawn and the switch returns to its resting position, the switch resets ready for the next input. The amount of force needed, along with the travel distance at which the switch actuates at, as well as the specific tactile feel of the switch will all vary from switch to switch. On the other hand, as their name suggests, Hall Effect switches function through something called the Hall Effect. This works through the displacement of electrons in electric current caused by an electromagnetic force. Utilising a Hall Effect sensor under each of the switches within the PCB, you're able to measure the strength of the magnetic field which, in the case of a keyboard switch, is the individual magnets contained within each of the switches. Like mechanical switches that have been around since the 70s, Hall Effect switches are also not an inherently new concept. First Hall Effect keyboard switches were on the Decision Data 8010 keyboard, which hit the market in 1968 using Honeywell micro switches, which aren't particularly micro if you ask me. It wasn't until the 80s that they saw widespread use, being held as luxury and premium and even saw use in Lisp machine keyboards. Even most recently, they've seen newer implementations, specifically within gaming keyboards which we'll soon look at. The first of these being the SteelSeries Apex line, which have utilised their patented OmniPoint switches since 2019. Now the history of these switches as well as how they function is interesting and everything, but what benefits do these have over our beloved Cherry MX? Well, from a daily use perspective, the lifespan of these switches should be a lot longer. The fact that they don't require contact from a leaf means that you're causing far less damage to the switch over time through standard use than MX star switches. For this reason as well, the lack of physical connection means they are overall a lot more reliable than your standard mechanical switch. But these facts alone aren't the reason that Hall Effect switches have garnered such a following in the past few years. The main draw for these switches for people are the ability for the actuation point to be set through proprietary software, meaning you can have different actuation points for different keys and most importantly meaning a small amount of time between the switch being pressed and being actuated. This has made these switches perfect for a lot of first person shooters, which brings me on to the Wooting. From the outset, this keyboard doesn't look to be anything remarkable, but the Gatoron Lecker switches have cemented this board as one of the greats within the gaming scene. The fact that the Wooting is also a standard 60% tray mount has also meant that people have been able to mod the board to sound and look a whole lot better than the stock version. GMK keycaps, tofu cases and aftermarket plates to change the look, sound and feel of the board. Since the Wooting, not only have various gaming keyboards emerged utilising this tech, but a number of other more custom focused companies have entered the space. KBD fans have the Holy 60, which from what I've heard so far doesn't sound that great, but I do love how this thing looks. Mellotrix have their own offering in the Boog 75, which has this very love it or hate it aesthetic to the case, and from a more enthusiast angle, Gion is working on his own Hall Effect board, which I for one am really excited for. But different companies aside, I think it's time we look at the new QK65. I've been using this board with the standard MX PCB the last week or two and this board's everything you'd expect it to be. Sounds great and looks great for the price. Standard quirky key stuff. It kinda goes without saying but if you have the Neo 65 or you already have the QK65 V2, it wouldn't personally make sense to me to pick up this board as well. Unless you really like collecting 65%. With that as my basis for the board sound and feel, it's now worth us stripping this down and trying out the Hall Effects module for this board.
As this PCB doesn't use NX style switches, we can't configure the keys, function layers, lighting effects with QMK or VIA like a regular MX style PCB. Therefore, QWERTYKeys offer their own HE config to change different features of these switches, similar to the Wooting. These include adjustable actuation point, dynamic keystrokes, and mod tab. So basically, you have multiple functions per key depending on the nature of the press. As well as this, you also have the option to set up different profiles depending on the board's intended use, i.e. grinding out Valorant or writing an essay that's late because you spent too long grinding out Valorant. Although the version I've been using is still in the pre-release version, it seems to work fine through the minimal testing I've done as intuitive regarding changing the actuation points of specific keys, which I think is going to be the main selling point for a lot of people here. I don't particularly play any games that would benefit from these switches, so I haven't delved deep into the functionality side of the other features of this software. But if I see any more in-depth reviews from other creators with more experience in this particular field, then I'll link them down in the description. As of the video's release, the guide for how to use this software is still under development, but if it's anything like QWERTYKey's other guides, I'm sure this will give all the insight anyone would need regarding how to navigate it, set up the different functions they have advertised on their Notion page. Functionality aside, the main draw for me with this particular Hall Effects PCB was the switches that are included. One thing that's put me off the myriad of boards that have been released so far other than their very gamer-focused design is the sound. I like that these switches A actually come pre-lubed and it's really solid, and B it doesn't have a gap at the bottom of each switch. I know a lot of people really like the sound of the Wooting switches, and having this gap actually makes a lot of sense when you think about the functionality of the switches with the position of the magnet being measured by the PCB. But having a bottom housing that actually allows the switches to bottom out like a standard MX style switch results in a much more full sound signature, in my opinion. Obviously you still have to take into account the mounting style, the plate, the fact that this board in particular has a number of different weights on it, as well as the specific specific caps used will all influence the sound of the board. The sound signature of this board in particular is a little too deep for my personal preferences, but I think it's definitely a step in the right direction compared to previous customs. As many others probably have, I've been waiting to see Hall Effect switches come into the more custom side of the hobby for a while, and as more designers and companies implement these into their own boards, I'm sure we are likely to see better and better implementations. As with the Wooting, inviting individuals to customise their board with new cases, plates and caps who may not have been interested in the hobby previously, I'm hopeful that more enthusiast angles Hall Effect boards will help to bring new people into this hobby once again. Although, don't get me wrong, I'm in no way saying that Hall Effect will take precedent over MX style switches within the space. It's unlikely we will see these produced in mass from an enthusiast angle, just because of the extra pieces that are required to give these Hall Effect switches their full capabilities. That said, I mentioned Geon's working on a Hall Effect board himself, so it'll be interesting to see what other designs and makers dabble within the Hall Effect side of the scene, and what great keyboards we'll get as a result of it. But back to the current board in my hands. I think the classic version of the QK65 was needed, and although it was to appease those who really didn't like the screens and LED strip of the V2, I'm really glad they added this feature to its release. QWERTYKey seems to have a number of other HE implementations within other boards in their lineup as well as new releases, so I'm excited to see how this software progresses, as well as how some of their previous boards like the Neo 65 sound with the Hall Effect PCB installed. Now that's all I had on the QK65, if you've enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe down below, and let me know your thoughts in the comments of the board itself or Hall Effect switches in general. As always do follow my Instagram and join my Discord for other updates, thanks for watching and I will see you nerds in the next one. Peace!